I think you can take a snapshot in time, maybe a one or two year period, looking at some standard uh, moving average levels and see if the stock actually reflects that it relies on those. Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by Charles Schwab. I'm your co-host, Joel Elkanen, along with Sarah Potter. She's an options and futures trader. She's the owner of SheCanTrade.com and author of How to Trade Like a Pro. Sarah, how are you doing on this Tuesday morning? I'm fine, thanks. How are you doing, Joel? We're doing good. So, boy, we've had a couple days here, I think going back almost to last Wednesday, uh, we've had, we like to kind of call it like the yo-yo market, and we've really had some extended volatility. We've had volatility in the overnight sessions. That spilled over into the day sessions here. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom for players when uh, the market's getting a little bit volatile? Yeah, you know, and I think this is where you start to see the real traders where things get divided because certainly right now, it's not the easiest time to be trading. You know, when you look back over the summer, the market just kind of kept going up and up, and anybody can trade those markets. It's easy, right? Things are going higher, so you buy and everything's good. But when you see times like today, I mean, the markets right now have really shifted from the summer, and I think that every trader needs to be readjusting their trading strategy to really make sure that they're benefiting from is so volatile. And that's what's so great about um, actually about trading options is that you can keep changing your strategy based on what's happening in the market. So I would just want to make sure that everybody is kind of cautious about the strategies they're using and making sure they're still collecting lots of good evidence in the market before they're placing their strategy and they understand what they're doing because this is not an easy time for sure. Yeah, one thing uh, when I used to uh, uh, run the uh, the Bright Trading Office, at, you know, one point we had you know thirty traders in there, and when the markets got extremely volatile, what you know what I would tell them was is that you really don't need to trade the same size in order to make the same amount of money. If you know if stocks are moving, you know, three or four times their average range, you know, you don't you don't need to put the same same lot size on to uh you know to reap the same kind of benefits and it also helps you uh manage the risk but uh you mentioned in times like this you know options are away but uh kind of with the you know with the volatility pumped up uh you know they kind of say when uh you know when volatility gets up like this when it gets high it you know it's time to start you know selling the options is uh has that been your approach well, I still think it's important to be diversified, but certainly I have to say the volatility is very attractive and I'm definitely readjusting my option strategies to take advantage of that volatility. Uh, and that's certainly nice about selling. Uh, but I think that's really important what you just said. I want to reemphasize that piece is the markets have shifted. So for those poor people who keep trying to do the same thing over and over again, if you're changing, like let's say you're trading with a really big lot size, for instance, like you mentioned, um, it means that, yeah, you're going to get stopped out. You can make just as much money by readjusting things, trading less, and still making money at the same time. So I think that's really important that you mention that. And I think this, again, you know, a pro professional trader understands what's happening in the market, and they're readjusting their strategy to make sure that they're taking advantage of this. And knowing and seeing the increased volatility here really means that you want to be adjusting that strategy to take advantage of that rather than let those things burn you. And that's a big difference between a professional trader and someone who's just kind of starting out and doesn't understand it yet. So if you are just starting out, make sure that you are really readjusting your plan and your strategy and understanding that these markets are moving and uh, and be patient as well. I think there's a big key there. You don't have to, just because you trade, you know, you say, oh, I trade every day. It doesn't mean that you actually trade every day. Maybe one day it doesn't look so good. Like we've got news coming out today, right? Like maybe you want to wait and place your trades later in the afternoon and just watch to see what kind of evidence is coming out from the market and then adjust accordingly. Now, you say the markets have changed. The character of the market has changed, right? It's become more volatile. And uh, I can remember back at the beginning of August, we were having, you know, similar kind of price action. 
And I was just 100 convinced because of the heightened volatility that, you know, this market was eventually going to give way. Well, it gave way to the upside. Uh, now you're 100, point high, 100 points higher in the S&P. Are you, are you talking just to keep the way the market is trading? It's changed or do you think that there's, there's a change in sentiment or there's been a change in trend? I think if you look at price, the way that price is behaving right now is changing. So the last time I was on the show, I was actually saying, you know, yeah, I thought the market was going to hit 2000 and and it did. And I was correct about that. And you can see that price was behaving differently then than it is now. And that's why I mean that I think it's a different market right now. And so I wouldn't say to you today, hey, I think we're going to see 2000 at this point. Um, What I've been noticing, if you watch price, especially since Thursday, um, price seems to have a, a real pullback in the middle of the day or in the morning and then by the end of the day you're seeing things come back again and what I would caution or what I'm concerned about is those dips are only going to happen so many times they're only going to be so many times when people are going to come in and buy the dip and that's going to help bring the market back up again I think it is inevitable now and we're seeing the signs that the market's not just going to continue to go higher and higher every day. I do think we're seeing more weakness, um, which which means I think everyone needs to be a little bit more nimble in the market if they want to be around long term. Okay. Um, any particular stocks or sectors that you're identifying weakness in? Uh, well, I'm actually, what I'm doing right now this week, my strategy is still looking for pockets of strength. So I always like to be trading in the same direction of where kind of the overall broad markets are moving. And so I pay attention to the ES, the futures market, especially today. And so since it really hasn't broken down yet on the weekly chart, so what that means for me is I'm still looking for individual stocks to place options in that still have some strength in them because we haven't seen a breakthrough yet on that weekly chart on the ES. Once I see that, then my strategy is going to be I'm going to start looking for weakness. Um, One individual stock that I'm actually paying attention to and I'm probably going to be looking to enter today uh, is Baidu. Okay. Let's take a look at Baidu. Okay. 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 So if you look, I like to look on, you know, multiple different time frames. So when I'm kind of paying attention through the market, so looking at something like here on the daily chart of Baidu, when you first look at it, you think, oh my goodness, it's kind of all over the place, right? Your moving averages are basically moving sideways. Uh, I pay attention to the 13 and 21 EMA and price is kind of chopped right through all those. So at first glance, I think people would say, wait a second, Baidu doesn't look like a good trading opportunity. Um, But in fact, if you move to the weekly chart of Baidu, you'll notice that the moving averages continue to move higher. And actually, the price is actually nice and close uh, to the 8 EMA. So to me, that's signaling, okay, that's a great opportunity to get into the long side of Baidu. Um, so what I've been doing now is just kind of watching it over the last, at the end of last week into this week. And now I think today, especially uh, with what we're seeing on the five minute uh, and the 60 minute chart as of yesterday, there's some really good opportunities, I think, to get into this one. I still think there's strength here because of what you're seeing on that weekly chart. Right. Do you pay any attention to retracements at all? Because when I'm, when I'm looking at this chart and the first thing that pops up, pop, pops up, out to me is you had a double bottom just under the 210 level and then you had a rally up to 231.41 and you had a pullback all within this area but the 50 percent retracement area is right at the 220 level so i'd agree with your thesis that uh if it holds above 220 i see some room on the upside uh but if this thing uh, breaks out 220, I can see it going right back down to that 210 level. Do you pay any attention to uh, tracement, you know, retracements or any of the Fibonacci numbers? Um, I do pay attention to them. I am a technical analyst for sure, but I have to say that I don't get too bogged down from it. What I'm really doing is paying attention to how price is behaving at the time. So certainly I want to be aware of those levels. And as you, we both agree, there's some good levels here around the 220. Um, but I want to see how price behaves, especially today. So I'm not entering this one until I, some of the news comes out. I want to see how the, the broad markets, whether or not that's going to be holding up, because that's going to also help influence my ind- individual decision about Baidu as the stock. So, yeah, I guess in a nutshell, I do pay attention to them. I, I do pay more attention to FIB levels, though, on the broad markets, um, more so than what I do on the individual stocks. 
Okay, you mentioned the S&Ps on a weekly basis here, and you didn't see a breakdown. Now, yesterday, we got pretty darn close. Are you using those yeah. lows at the from the end of last week as your barometer to determine whether or not uh, we have more downside? Yeah, absolutely. And last week was really important. Thursday, I'm sure everyone was stressed on Thursday. That was quite the day we saw. Um, but we did see things kind of, I guess, I don't know if you call it a rebound or hold steady. How's that for a good word on Friday? Um, so now, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see where we move and what we do this week. Um, I'm hopeful, though, with the news that we have today that that, that is going to keep the markets up. But, I mean, th- we're, we're at a, a crux in the market right now. And, um, and just like I said, the last time I was here talking with you, I thought there was lots of strength, and we did see price move all the way up to the 2000s. And I don't have that certainty um, to talk about at this point. I, I'm cautious just like anybody else because certainly um, we need to wait and see what's going to happen, especially into today, where that market is going next. Because I, I think at this point, the broad markets can go either way for sure. Okay, so you do have some uh, data coming out today. You have the uh, Chicago, September, Chicago P&I coming out at 9.45, and then uh, that's quickly followed by the uh, consumer, September Consumer Confidence at, uh, at 10 mm-hmm. p.m. I mean, do you prefer to just sit those out, and maybe not take any positions until the 10 o'clock hour, or will you take your, you know, your positions, you know, according to your numbers ahead of time and uh, see if the data works for you or against you? Yeah, so I'm one of those traders that uh, definitely pays attention to the news. And if I don't have to be in a position before there is news, I don't think there's any point in holding the risk for that. So what I generally do, um, I actually don't generally place trades until about 10 o'clock most days, regardless of whether there's news or not. I just don't think there's any real point to get in much earlier. There's always, you know, around 9.30, there's always the big rush. Um, everyone is like, you know, positions are getting filled that they've they've talked about with their brokers overnight. To me, it's just, it's a hurried environment between 9.30 and 10. So I actually generally always place my trades 10 o'clock onwards throughout the day. Um, but certainly when we have news, especially consumer confidence, to me, that one's important. Um, and I do think that I'm expecting that that one will move the market around 10. So I'm going to wait to see where those go, what happens to the market when obviously these news events come out and see kind of how people are behaving. And I guess that's my strategy. And that's why I have such a great trading um, average is that um, I wait to see where price is going next and then kind of trade in that direction rather than trying to guess where things are going. I guess that's, that's all it is, is, is just a guess. And that's really just more of an example. And um, I'm trading my real live money just like everybody else. And so I prefer to wait to see where things are moving and then place those trades because I, I like to protect my money and just like everyone else and, and make profit, right? So it's all about waiting for these news events to come out and see how things behave and then and then get in accordingly. So you mentioned your trading average. Is that, uh, could you explain that? Is that your percentage of uh, winning trades or losing trades? Uh, how, what, do you, what do you use for criteria to determine your trading average? Yeah, so I trade uh, weekly options most of the time, basically meaning that I'm placing my trades Tuesday through Thursday and then I get out on Friday. And uh, I have a very high trading, I guess it's like a batting average, I guess, right? Like, you know, profitable trades to losing trades. And uh, I'm up at uh, close to 90% on my trading. You're 90%? Uh, so I'm very, very proud. 90%? Of, yep. So 90, yep. Not, yeah. So nine out of 10 trades that you make that are, are profitable? That's correct. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I, thanks. Yeah, no, I'm very, very proud of it. Um, but it, it's because what, it's a really important to wait to see what price is doing. And, and really, once you've been paying attention to how price has been moving, and that's really what my key is, and I think that's the skill that I'm really good at, is watching individual stocks, kind of getting a feel for what's happening, and then trading in that direction. I think it allows for people to, be, uh, to have really good batting averages um, in terms of their trading stats. And that's the best thing about weekly options. I don't understand why more people don't do it because to me it just seems so great is you can always change the way that you're trading every week based on what's happening in the broad market. So like last week, for instance, right, we had Thursday that we had to obviously pay pullback. Um, it provides opportunities to kind of catch the bottom of those moves. 
so I was placing trades Thursday morning. I was holding it for less than 24 hours and then getting it out, getting out Friday with a really nice profit. Um, and you can do that nicely with weekly options and still be protected, right? You can manage your risk really well. So I, I just think it's just the best way to trade and um, rather than holding things more longer term. You know, most people take options and they're, they're holding it for three months and uh, all that kind of thing. Weekly options, you could just readjust. So the markets right now, who knows where it's going to go today. I'm going to wait and see. And then um, probably look for placing some trades and then, you know, be out of them by Friday. And then next week, if things do really roll over and, and crash and burn, well, then I'm going to be on the short side of things and I'll be out of those by Friday as well. It's a great way to trade. And that, that percentage is over what, what period of time since you started trading or since you've established your site? Uh, once, since I started trading live in the public. So that starting average is about eight months now. Um, but obviously before, it was still the same. It's just I wasn't trading in the public. So, okay, so my trading good. room is fairly new, I guess. There's probably a lot of other trading rooms out there that have probably been out there longer. Um, I just started mine because people started... Uh, asking me, and then obviously it was a great room because there's lots, lots of great grades. But, yeah, um, I would say. Yeah. I, I mean, as long as you don't let the 10%, you know, erode a lot of your 90% of your profits, as long as you're handling, you know, good risk-reward ratios, then, you know, that's good because, you know, and you could you could attest to this too. Some people have the mentality, you know, in the markets, well, they go into a shorter-term trade or a, a weekly option trade and it goes against them and then, they decide to roll it over and kind of go, you know, keep going and, until it comes that way. And, uh, you know, that's certainly not a, a good trading strategy. No, that's called cheating. And I don't do that. I do not roll my positions. And I, I think that, that is a good point to mention. There are a lot of people out there that claim statistics based on rolling. And really what they're doing is hiding losses. And that's, that's not what I do. And I, I actually don't even think that's a good strategy to use. If, I think if you're wrong, you're wrong. Get out and move on. Um, but if you're right, focus all your energy on, on the good trades as opposed to trying to manage all the losers because that's where everyone you know, ends up losing more money because they don't just get out. Um, I, I get out of my trades if they, if they don't work. And, and you're right. You do need to be managing your risk and reward, and that, that is so important. I'm probably not the flashiest trader out there, um, but it's nice, consistent profit yep. and, uh, and something I'm really proud of. It's something kind of different than what, what most are doing. Yeah, so you don't, you don't trade every day then, right? Yeah, I, well, I don't trade Mondays, but other than that, yes, I trade every day. Ah, is that just because you don't like Mondays or is it? <laughs> <laughs> is... You know, trading allows me the opportunity to not have to kind of go to an office and do that nine to five, you know, get the commute and everything. It allows me to work from home. So I just choose to um, take a three three day weekend and, and only work four days. And that's just a personal choice so that I can kind of balance family and, and work. Um, and we're all doing this, right? Because we, we want to be able to have a little bit more security of, of finances so you can do what you want. So I figure, why am I doing this if I'm going to work five days a week? That doesn't make sense to me. So I work uh, Tuesday and then Tuesday to Fridays. And then generally Fridays, I'm just cashing in my my trades it's not really i don't usually have to place that many on friday um, correct i certainly right. probably ramp up if you looked at my trades for the week uh and i do trade live in my trading room i mean everyone sees what i'm doing um i ramp up so tuesday will be a slower day in terms of placing trades and then as we move into thursday that's when i've now put on more more trades what would you say the percentage of your trades are long the market versus short the market Hmm, that's a good question. Well, it really depends on what, what's happening. Um, I don't know, because I, I would do both. Like, um, you know, PCLN, something that's kind of been short. Netflix, I've been short. Um, it really just depends what the individual stock is doing. So I will trade both ways. So I certainly wouldn't. And that's what I mean by, you know, the summer was great. Everything was going up. So you just play as a trade in that direction. But, um, you know, I'm not just always trading long just because that's what everything's doing. You still have to look at the individual stock and then find trades there. Um, so, yeah, like I'll still buy puts on something that has um, a downtrend for sure. And Netflix has I'm been. I think is the okay. last one I did. I think Before it, we let yeah. you go, could you just give us, I mean, I, something that you're looking at as a, a potential setup here? I know we have, uh, you know, I know you like to wait till the first, you know, things shake out after the numbers and stuff. Could you just... Give, walk us through something that you have on your radar for today, either long or short. 
Yeah, so one would be Baidu. So I'm watching yep. Baidu to the long side. I think that there's a great opportunity there. But again, just waiting until 10 o'clock that there's confirmation there that those prices are going to hold. Um, one position I'm in now that I am hope that still looks good and has held up nicely is uh, Microsoft. Okay. So I got into Microsoft um, last week and it had pulled down nicely, so got into that one. And so it's held really nicely on the weekly chart, so I'm still in it. Um, that one expires this Friday, so I'll be watching that one, especially sitting around 46 to see what's happening there, because um, we're now prices below the moving averages. So I have the, uh, the 45 call in Microsoft, and I'll be looking for exits there around the 47. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold it too long just because of what's happening in the broad markets. But at this point, this still trade is, is good and uh, good. looking for exit strategies around 47. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, – it had a double bottom at 45.76 from Friday and Monday. And then uh, you got a double top, too. For your sake, I hope it busts through that 46.62 level. Yeah. And then I see those uh, those 47.09 and 47.11 high. So buying into money, that's uh, that's a way to go. Uh, one final question from Pete A. here. He wants to know, what is your Twitter handle? Oh, my Twitter is she can trade. Okay. She can trade. Sarah? Yeah, I'll, I'll watch for him on Twitter. <laughs> okay, Pete A's good. He's, uh, he's picked out some good things for us in pre-market trading, so keep an eye on him. Sarah Potter, options and futures trader, owner of SheCanTrade.com, and the author of How to Trade Like a Pro, uh, talking about the overall market and some of her setups, potential setups for today. Sarah, thanks a lot. Have a good trading day, and uh, I hope Microsoft gets up to 47 for you. Thanks, Joel. Happy trading. See ya. Okay, bye-bye.